What's up, everybody? Welcome to FSU News. That stands for Full Spectrum Universe News. The only news that matters, okay? Or the news that really matters, whichever you prefer. I know a lot of people are thinking, ah, oh, he's got already got a show. What's he doing a new show for? Because when you watch the news, there's a lot of doom and gloom, uh, political statements, things like that. This is not that kind of news. This kind of news is the happy news, scientific, history, things that are going on currently in our uh, in our world, or our, I'll say our community. Really, this is the news that matters to us. So uh, if you're looking for political stuff, this is not the place. This is not the place. I've got stories for you. I've got different segments that we're going to go through. As you saw in the intro, we have a lot of different things, that uh, a lot of different subjects that we cover. So uh, this is a way for you to get that information. What I will be doing is I'll be doing one of these a week for everybody who's on YouTube, for everybody who has a subscription service, which is only $2 a month, whether you use Patreon or Subscribestar. It is either it's Subscribestar at Full Spectrum Universe or uh, Patreon backslash Full Spectrum Universe. So if you get if you have any of those, you'll be getting three of these a week. We'll be doing this to create more content, but also to keep you informed on what's going on in today's world without it being anything that you see on the regular news. So it'll be a little bit different. Um, first segment, we're going to go. We're going to go to the first segment and we're going to uh, we're going to talk about some things. That's right, space news. Everybody who knows me knows that I'm a space nut. I love talking about what's going on up there and, uh, you know, things like that. So first thing we have is uh, the Russian cosmonauts capture a video of a special guest. And while, while I actually go through this article, I'm going to pull up a, I'm going to pull up a picture so you can see what I'm talking about. One of the crew members currently aboard the International Space Station is a Russian cosmonaut by the name of Ivan Wagner. Recently, he was capturing a video of Earth from the space station. What he intended to capture was a time-lapse video of the auras, uh, beautiful auras that uh, transcend over the planet while the sun comes up, the sun goes down. However, he also captured something that was on video, and he called it a space guest. As you can see in the picture, we have five lines or five dots that are going along the horizon, and... Uh, it's, it's pretty cool because a lot of people see this and they think, oh, it's SpaceX. Very well could be. We have no comments from SpaceX as of right now. They've actually inquired about it to SpaceX to see if it was actually there or not or if it was some kind of formation. So this isn't quite aliens, but space news. <laughs> we have a statement from uh, one gentleman who actually is a uh, scientist there. And he uh, his name is Vladimir Ustamenko, and he issued a statement saying that it's too early to, to make a conclusion until researchers and scientists uh, from the Space Institute of Russia Academy of Science have reached out to SpaceX and see if they are Starlink satellites. But uh, it's kind of compelling. This actually happened about three days ago. So you be the judge and you tell me if that's something that uh, maybe it's a UFO, maybe it's Starlink. One thing that I have noticed a lot about Starlink, though, is that even with the Neowise comment and things like that, they actually do end up uh, messing up a lot of pictures that we have for uh, different for different things. And uh, it's kind of crazy because they put those Starlink satellites pollute the night sky. They they really pollute it, and it uh, it, it definitely hampers on on a lot of the good pictures that we get from, let's say, the Hubble telescope. Uh, this specific gentleman who's at the actual International Space Station. So you know things. Things are getting crazy out there. There's been a lot of sightings. Things it's, it's a little nuts. The next story I have for you is basically, I know this is something else about uh, the solar system itself. Our solar system may be unusual is what they're saying. We have rogue planets unveiled by the NASA's Roman Space Telescope. Uh, new simulations show that NASA... Their Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope will be able to reveal a multitude of rogue planets, freely floating bodies that drift through our gravity or our galaxy untethered to any star. Uh, they found out quite a few of these planets, but uh, as we go further, we'll keep talking. The study, studying these islands and worlds will help us understand more about our planetary systems, how they form, how they evolve, and how they break apart. Astronomers discovered planets 
beyond our solar system known as exoplanets, which is a key word. If you ever look things up, exoplanet is the word that you want to go with in the 1990s. So we quickly went, we went from knowing only a few of these solar systems and realizing that a lot of these planets, and if there are planets out there that are rogue planets or untethered to any star, that they actually outnumber the stars by billions. Because if you think about it, there's always planets around a star. And if you do statistical math, you would think, okay, there's a star. If you take our solar system, for example, there's actually there's, there's quite a few planets around it. So every star might have those specific types of planets, and hence there'd be billions of stars. So uh, as we go forward, we have a comment by a gentleman by the name of Samson Johnson. He is a graduate of the Ohio State University in Columbus who led the research effort on such uh, study of the rogue planets. He said, as our view of the universe has expanded, we've realized that our solar system may be unusual. Uh, they don't know if these planets are actually in every solar system, but they are in our solar system. So uh, he also said, Roman, as in the telescope, will help us learn more about how we fit in the cosmic scheme of things by studying rogue planets. The findings for this specific article you can find in the, uh, they're published in the Astronomy Journal. And astronomers have found, like I said, only a few of these rogue planets. Now, one thing that I was actually thinking of while I was looking into this is if these planets are by themselves and not by any star, how would they hold life? And I have a couple theories on it. You know, uh, one theory I did think of while I was actually talking to my girlfriend, I said, you know, maybe the core of these planets is so hot. They're dark all the time, but there is a core that will actually give it. So enough heat that bacteria will grow there. Of course, not humanoids who need to breathe air. There's no solar system. There's no sun that's creating any kind of lush vegetation. So it would be very difficult for anything to really live on these planets. But thinking about it, there might be one way that it actually, that it actually works. So on to the next segment. Paranormal news. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Uh, what we what paranormal news is is basically we'll try and find a a team or a group that has done some kind of paranormal investigation in and or around the United States, England, Australia, Germany, basically around the world. But what we're looking for is we're going to be looking for specific types of let's say we'll, we'll say proof or maybe things that uh, that that are a little bit different. You know, uh, well, some of the things that that we want to talk about with this stuff is, uh, you know, we want to make sure that what we're looking at is, uh, is different. So basically this one actually comes with a specific clip that I'm going to put on full screen. Let me set the stage for it though. This is the paranormal investigation in the South Derbyshire hotel. Uh, it's from Derby live Derbyshire live, as you can see it, a paranormal team carried out a hunt at an alleged haunted South Derbyshire hotel. The team East Midland Paranormal, a group based in Nottingham, which is England, led an investigation after reports of ghostly sightings of this Newtown Park Hotel in Newtown Road. Which, uh, actually, it's Newtown Road, and it's Newtown Solely, I guess, is the name of the place. Uh, according to the investigation, some of the rooms are said to be haunted, with strange sounds being heard, as well as a white lady, who actually an apparition, roaming the area. The team of eight crew members and a further four guests that they uh, they concentrated on one bedroom, which is where this video actually takes place. And uh, they also concentrated on the cellar. The cellar didn't have a lot of action, but this room was actually something a little bit different. The leader of the investigation by the name of Sarah Goldsmith, you see her in the video, described one of the terrifying experiences she faced during this probe. Later in the evening, she explained, she entered one bedroom alongside two other investigators. A small suite bathroom was, uh, end suite bathroom was in the room, which most people had avoided for most of the night. As people reported, they had felt like someone was standing behind them whenever they got close to that room or whenever they came in, in close proximity to this specific room, they felt like that there was a presence watching them. When in the bedroom, Miss Goldsmith sat down and said she immediately was able to see a little dog. She also saw a lot of movements in the room as well. 
Now we're going to keep setting the stage here. While she sat there suddenly feeling angry, she looked left and right and then looked at the camera. The other investigator said that when she looked at the camera and her face had changed, it had gotten younger. So we don't know if she was possessed or if this specific apparition was coming through her skin so you could see it a little bit. But what we're going to do is we're going to go to this and we're going to we're going to expand it and we're going to we're going to watch. So let's let's take a look at what this is. As you can see, she's looking left to right. I zoom in on her. She seems to be in some kind of trance-like state. Kind of, kind of nudged her out of it. That's actually the bathroom that she's by. As you can see, it was a little crazy. Uh, they were saying that her face has changed. So when they actually went back to Mrs. Goldsmith, they said, she, her exact words, once they got her outside, they sat her down and she said, I had no idea where I was. And she felt like she wasn't supposed to be in that room anymore, which is why she left in the first place. She felt agitated and tried to make her, when they tried to make her stand up and she started, when they were filming, she said that she got so angry and she had no recollection of why or how. And it, uh, it, it threw her for a loop. You know, I mean, of course, anytime that you have any kind of contact like that, uh, we have a lot of paranormal people in the group. I'm sure that they have encountered such instances where maybe not possessed, but you could feel maybe something was touching you, breathing on you. So uh, it, it's pretty crazy to think about it, you know. And what they, another thing that they did is when they used a K2 meter while she was outside, a K2 meter is a device, of course, that if you don't know, it detects electromagnetic fields. It kept sounding alerts next to her. Many claim that uh, this indicates paranormal activity. So was she possessed? Was something going on? That's for you to decide. Uh, I found that today and I was like, wow, well, you know, maybe I should put this out there. Let's see what people think. And uh, it, it, was, it was, for me, it was a little crazy, you know? So basically what we're going to do now is we're going to go to our top story. Top story of the night. Everything, everything that we're uh, doing here is essentially, it's a, uh, a lot of, we do a lot of different topics. So this is the top story that I picked. Could also be under UFO news, but uh, what the Pentagon's new task force means. We've gone over this in a couple of the shows, but we've actually got the experts to weigh in on it. So what I did was I read this article. I took a compilation of what everybody was saying about this specific task force. Uh, some of these experts. I'll explain who they are. I'll read it to you. So we're all in the knowing. And uh, so two weeks ago, the U.S. State Department of Defense announced that the creation of the task force to analyze and understand the nature and origins of unidentified uh, aerial phenomena. They don't want to say UFO. They say aerial phenomena. So the reason why I'm going over this again is that some people who haven't seen that specific episode now knows what we're talking about. So we're going to go into that again. Just a little bit. The mission statements. So, again, the mission is to detect, analyze, and capture UAPs, unidentified aerial phenomena, that could potentially pose a threat to the U.S. national security. Uh, so they asked some of the UFO specialists that thought of what they thought of this newly announced task force. And basically, somewhat, maybe not so much what they thought, but maybe what they thought should come of it, what it should be. So we start with a gentleman, you know, and people that they felt – Cautiously optimistic. I know a lot of us feel cautiously optimistic. We hear 
all about this UFO. And we're like, oh, it's just going to be great. It's going to be great. They're going to tell us everything. We've gone over it. It could be soft disclosure. It could be a hard disclosure. They could give us everything. Doubtful. Doubtful. So some of these people are experts in the field, uh, some journalists, some presidents of scientific uh, lodges, things like that. So first guy we got was Mark Radeheiner. He is the president and scientific director of the J. Allen Hynek Center for UFO Studies of Chicago. J. Allen Hynek, Project Blue Book. We all know who he is. If you're into ufology, this guy is legend. He's seen a lot, did a lot. So basically what he said was the formation of the task force of UFOs another is another welcome development in the recent renewed interests and attention to these reports by the government agencies and political actors. So uh, he also added that without further details, it's impossible to judge how well positioned the task force will be to be seriously investigating reports, but I will remain cautiously optimistic for now. Just what I said. He wants to be optimistic because of course we all want, we all want it to seem like it's going to be everything we've asked for and more. So, you know, there's another expert that we got something from was a gentleman by the name of Jim Oberg. Jim Oberg is a noted space journalist, historian, and debunker of a slew of UFO sightings. So if anybody is to go against the grain on this or to see something on a different scale or a different side of the spectrum than people who love UFOs like we do, this is the guy. So he spoke about possible reasons for the Department of Defense to uh, to care about what they find. Uh, Jim Auberg is a self-admitted lifelong space nut and professor of the rocket science of rocket science of careers, which includes 20 years plus at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. So not only is he a debunker, he has quite a bit of uh, knowledge and background in rocketry and space itself. So some of the things that Ogbert said, said, I have no doubt that military intelligence services around the world have always been interested in UFO reports. Whether or not the real unexplainable phenomena is UFO uh, in UFO reports is whether or not the unexplained phenomena is to be uh, it's, it's to be mindful of a few of them. You know, so is there really a lot of them out there that are real? Some of which he feels maybe, some which maybe not. So going further, he also said that there are many non-extraterrestrial reasons that the Department of Defense will be interested in UFO reports. He goes through a list of them. I didn't really go into all those because it's all the stuff that you would understand why they wouldn't be UFOs, you know? So it's it's not relevant to somebody who's enjoying the UFO community. These are people who are trying to say against it. So we didn't go into much of that, but there were many experts that they talked to, but we're going to, to you know, we're going to take a look at just a few of them. And uh, that was one from each side as of right now. Uh, he also says that I don't think this task force as significant as some people might suggest. Uh, so, you know, that's this is going into another person who feels it's kind of debunking it. A gentleman by the name of Robert Schaefer, who is also a writer and UFO skeptic. He has also said that it's just a response to all the publicity generated by leaking the three most recent Navy infrared videos, which the Pentagon released. <clears throat> we all know as of late, the Pentagon released three videos of gentlemen in cockpits taking uh, pictures of exactly what they saw. They don't. They can't explain it. They're there. They're not there. They're all in infrared. Uh, they brought up a lot more questions than they did answers, which is part of what they did is they used this information from these infrared videos to go to Congress and say, okay, now it's time for a task force. We need to, we need to study this. It could be a threat to the United States. It could be a threat to the world. And I'm not sure if they were just using that as a ploy to go in and find disclosure in there because some of them are interested in it. But, of course, if you look at it from the military side all the time, people always think that they pose threats. They're going to take over the world. Look at every movie you've ever seen. Independence Day, the Battle of L.A. I mean, 
there's so many of them. There's so many of them. So the last expert that we actually took uh, comments from was Sarah Skolis. She is the author of a recently published book. They are already here. UFO cultures and why we see saucers. So she is a believer. So the first thing she said was first, I'd say that they that they established the establishment of a task force to investigate, understand UAPs, which is unidentified aerial phenomena, makes sense. And could, if done systematically, scientifically, and transparently, provide a lot of useful data. So I, I agree with that. I agree with that. She also said it also makes sense for the Department of Defense, whose job it is, of course, to protect the U.S. from threats in undertaking this endeavor. Like I said, this is giving a commitment from military services because we're saying it poses a threat. Things are out of control. So, you know, a lot of that has to do with making sure that people are safe. We always want to make sure people are safe. And as, as you can see in today's society, as of right this second, <laughs> nobody's safe. So at least they're trying to make us safe in some particular manner. So another comment she made is, however, I think that I think those expecting big exotic conclusions from this task force would do well to temper their expectations. It's exactly what I said. Soft disclosure, soft disclosure. They're going to give us just enough to wet the whistle, just a you know, a little taste but they're not going to go into rewriting history because of ancient astronaut theory. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. That's why people like myself, people like Omar, people like Clarence Mitchell, people like Leonard, we are all historians. We may be researchers, but right now we're taking what we know and trying to rewrite history in a way that incorporates a lot of the findings that we've made investigating ufos paranormal activity uh, you know a lot of things now in, in history are cut and dry cut and dry we 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 have open minds we are expanded a little bit more we're free thinkers so if somebody comes to us with a specific type of uh specific type of theory we're going to listen because anything is possible okay it's just like it's just like in the tag it says with passion and knowledge Anything is possible. Nothing's off limits. That's how we live life. That's how we do this. This is what we do this for. We're trying to put information out there for people. But let's, I digress. Let's get back. She also said, if you look at what the official announcement actually says, it's not quite, it's not quite as extraordinary as it might seem at first glance. I agree. I agree. They're telling us, oh, you know, it, things are going to be good. It's all good. That's, it's awesome. It's awesome. I'm ready. I'm ready to hear all of it. I want to know about Area 51, which I'm sure a lot of you are all, all the same. I want to know about reports. So as we come to the end of the show, it's only going to be maybe a half hour, 45 minutes. We're not going to go crazy. We're just going to give you some facts, some articles that I've read during the day, keep you up to date. But there's one thing I'm always fascinated with, and it's history. So at the end of every show, we're going to do something called this day in history. So we're going to go over something about August 25th. And the date we're going back to is August 25th, 1835. And this actually has something to do with the long lines of what we're talking about today. So on this day in history, August 25th, 1835, the first series of six articles announcing the supposed discovery of life on the moon appears in a New York Sun paper. We all know <laughs> there's there's no life on the moon. It's not there. We've been there now. But this is 1835. So let's go into what this actually is. It's called the Great Moon Hoax. Supposedly, it was reprinted from the Edinburgh Journal of Science, which is a big science publication of the day. Dr. Andrew Grant, astronomer, along with Sir John Herschel, traveled to, the, to an observatory in Cape Town, South Africa. Herschel said that he found evidence 
uh, of life on the moon. Such fantastic animals as in unicorns, two-legged beavers, uh, furry-winged humanoid bats. I think he's got a couple of bats up here. They're flying around too. But they also said that they actually found amethyst crystals, rushing rivers, and lush vegetations. I don't know what telescope he was looking through. Maybe there was a smudge on the lens. Who knows? Who knows? But let's keep going. Readers were taken in by the story as well as Yale University scientists, okay? Not realizing it was satire the whole time. The whole time. They put it out. They knew that they were going to get a big rush out of it. They knew that people were going to be like, oh, God, they were going to get crazy. But really, they put it as satire. But they didn't announce that right away. Whether they let people decide that this was a real article for months, okay? So uh, later in September, the Sun actually admitted that the article had been a hoax. But they actually got a series of six articles out in that time. From August to September, they got six articles out. So people were probably going crazy. They were like, oh, my God, we got to get to the moon. There's, There's... humanoid bat things up there with big wings and unicorns of all things. I mean, rainbows and sunshine and unicorns. It was like, it was like, you know, happy lands, I guess, but ended up being false. That was what happened on this day in history in 1835. Now looking at that, you know, history is one of my favorite things, but I believe we've come a long way since then to figure out what's really going on. Uh, One thing I want to touch on again is those rogue planets. It's indicative of our scientists to figure out space because in my eyes, space is a giant. We're we're a microcosm of space. The way that the cycles of life go on this planet, space is the macro while we're the micro. What the macro means is a bigger scale of what we have here. So the circle of life completes, uh, And that's, you know, that's a big deal to figure out what's going on out there will also help us to know what's going on down here. It'll help us in ways of scientific advancement. Also, when we want to go to Mars, it's going to give us a lot a lot more fuel of knowing what what we need to do to make sure that the astronauts are safe and things like that. Uh, I want to thank you all for tuning in. We're running up on a half hour. Like I said, if you're a subscription member, you will be getting three of these a week. Three. It was four, and that's three, maybe four. If I can get to four, I will give you four. People on just YouTube, you only get one. So there are advantages to being part of our subscription service. We have a ton of different levels with a ton of different options. We're going to be working on merchandise soon. We're going to get T-shirts out. We're going to get hats. We're going to get cups. So be ready for that. That's going to drop very shortly. We also have another show that's going to be dropping called the uh, golden age of disclosure. Now, I am a history buff, and I do love conspiracies. So what that show is going to be about is strictly conspiracies that coincide with history and the way that that works. That will have some political jargon in it because I do like the political arena too. I just don't bring it to certain shows. So if that's not your bag of tricks, don't go there. But Trust me when I tell you it's going to define history in ways that you've never, ever seen, never heard of. And it's going to explain a lot of today because when you know history, you know the future because history repeats itself. So on that note, please try and and get and support us. Uh, we have a lot of different places where you can support us. Here is one of them. This is Subscribestar. This is what I was talking about. This is so you get all the videos. Every show that we do, every interview we do, we have an extra half hour to 45 minutes of one-on-one conversation with the guest. We also have two extra episodes of this particular show that's going to be from now on. We're also going to be adding more shows to it. The content is never ending. It's never stopping. So we have Subscribestar. But if you don't like Subscribestar, we also have a Patreon. Eventually, we're going to get rid of one and keep one, but we're not sure if Patreon's going to stay in business, so we have two set up just in case, okay? Another thing I want to tell everybody, too, is that if you have a small business, 
Okay. I'm going to leave that up there, but read the bottom scroll. If you have a small business, we have a tier on both Patreon and Subscribestar. And what we do is we will read your advertisement twice an episode. Once in the beginning, once at the end, or once in the middle. You can dictate where you want us to read these specific episodes or these specific uh, advertisements. I'm sorry. This does a lot. We reach over 2,000 people on Facebook. We have over 2,000 hours watched on YouTube. And we only have 73 subscribers. So please go and follow us on YouTube. Subscribe. Hit the bell. We need to get our, our uh, we need to get our algorithm up. But here's the thing with YouTube, with Facebook, your advertisement on Facebook. We are part of groups. I'm a part of a few. My group has over 1,300 people in it, almost 1,400. I am also a part of groups that I basically put the the podcast on that have 106,000 members. 106,000. Okay, I am in quite a few groups like that, and they let me put my podcast up there. So your message will be, uh, uh, your your small business, whether it's online, whether it's a startup business online. If you're a bigger business, and I know you have a lot of traffic, we'll have to negotiate a price. But that's a different story. If you're starting up, I want to help you any way I can. Just like I hope everybody goes and gets that two dollars subscription. It's not a lot of money. I know I know money's tight. It's not a lot of money, but you get a lot of extra content. So, but, I, but I'm willing to help the small businesses out. For $100 a month, which is a lot less than any advertising you're going to find anywhere else on the web, I will read your advertisement. I will put up your website. I have a lot of ways to communicate. And we have over hundreds of thousands of people seeing these episodes. Not only that, we are also getting into a service that is going to put our podcast, audio only, but our podcast on every major podcast app that is out there. So look into it. It might be in your best interest. With it, we've done enough advertising for today. I want to say thank you for everybody who's joined. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. This is Full Spectrum Universe News.